Hey guys, today is Wednesday, November 11th, which is Remembrance Day here in Canada. The time's around 3.20 p.m. and the temperature is 15 degrees Celsius. I'm here at Young Dundas Square, which is located at the southeast corner of the intersection of Young and Dundas. And in my left hand, I have a DJI Osmo Pocket 1. And in my right hand, I'm holding a DJI Pocket 2. The Pocket 1 is the camera that I've been using for most of the videos I've posted on this channel for the last two years or so. That would be excluding the cycling videos and live streams. I've had the Pocket 2 for about a week now and there's been a lot of questions in the comments about it. So I thought I'd pull out both cameras and try recording a video with both at the same time just to give you guys an idea of how they both perform and what their similarities and differences are. It is worth noting that I do have wind muffs over the microphones on both of the cameras. The Pocket 2 does have the benefit of four microphones, so it is capable of recording in stereo. However, I wouldn't recommend using either camera outdoors without wind muffs, as they're not particularly good at handling windier conditions. There's a look north up Young Street. And that is the Eaton Center across the street. So I'll just head south down Young Street and then I'll pass through the Eaton Center. And that'll give you an idea of how these cameras compare in an indoor environment. One thing you will notice is the Pocket 2 has a wider angle. Both cameras are set up mostly on auto. The ISO levels are auto, the white balance is auto. And I don't have any lens attachments on either one and they're both on their default normal color profiles. I sometimes tweak some of those settings as I film and make some color adjustments in post-production. But for the sake of this video, I'm just going to leave everything on their auto conditions or settings. That's a weird choice of words. The gimbal stabilization on either camera seems to be about the same. I haven't really noticed any difference in terms of how stable the shot is with either camera. The default picture is a bit different. You might notice the colors on the Pocket 2 are a bit more saturated. And it's got a bit of a sharpened look to it. There's a look north of Yonk Street. So I'll just head over into the Eaton Center right now. And I didn't think this one through as I'm not wearing a mask. So let me just put one of the cameras down so I can slide that on.
All right, now one thing you can do with this camera is flip the screen around. And that'll uh, definitely give you an idea as to how much wider the picture is on the pocket too. It also looks like I've got my mask on a bit crooked, so I'll fix that. So I think for vlogging purposes at least, the Pocket 2 would be the better bet and probably worth upgrading if you have a Pocket 1. Alright, so as I flip both cameras around, they seem to have both changed their horizon levels. So let me see if I can fix that. I'll double tap the right button on either camera. There we go. So this is the Toronto Eaton Centre. Let's try heading down the escalator. I'm doing my best to keep the horizon levels consistent between the two cameras. But given that the Pocket 2 is so much wider, that does pose a bit of a challenge while trying to do that looking through these tiny view screens. Don't forget to leave your thoughts and comments below as to which camera you prefer. I think I actually kind of prefer the slightly softer image of the Osmo 1 versus the over-sharpened look of the Pocket 2. Alright, let's head outside but pretty much everything else on the Pocket 2 is a home run in my books. I must look kind of dumb walking around holding two cameras like this. There's a look at the back end of Old City Hall. So what I'll try to do is find some different lighting conditions. I'll go walk in front of City Hall and then maybe I'll find an area that's not so well lit. And one of the reasons for that is the Pocket 2 does have a larger sensor, so it does handle low light conditions better. And one thing I've noticed with the Pocket 1 is sometimes the auto ISO tends to fall asleep. 
So if I'm in a well-lit area and walk around a corner and find myself on a street that's not particularly well-lit, the ISO will not adjust and I'll have to tap the screen to sort of wake it up. And I haven't had that problem with the Pocket 2. There's an example right there. I think if you look at City Hall or Old City Hall on the Pocket One, at least on the viewfinder, the dark seemed to be crushed, whereas the Pocket Two has adjusted to let in enough light to show the details on the building clearly. That was perhaps my biggest gripe with the Pocket One. And sometimes I'd have to manually change the brightness and exposure on certain scenes. And I haven't noticed that issue yet on the Pocket 2. And this is usually another issue in the late afternoon, is walking west towards the sun. The Pocket 1 tends to handle these conditions quite inconsistently, whereas the Pocket 2 has seemed to handle them much better. I am currently handle, or, uh, walking west right now. I'm also still wearing my mask in case they sound a bit muffled. So let's go take a look at the Toronto sign and new city hall at Nathan Phillips Square. And I'll finish this up at a subway station. And then what I'll do, <laughs> I don't think I pronounced it very well, but what I'll do after that is I'll duck out at night for a few minutes with each camera. And I'll do a quick side-by-side -side at night so you can see how they perform against each other in those conditions. And I'll put that at the end of the video. quite easy to get all of City Hall in the shot with the Pocket 2, but with the Pocket 1, you have to be a lot more careful in how you frame the shot, as it's not as wide. What's interesting is the sky on the Pocket 1, at least in the viewfinder, seems to be a bit more pale than it really is, and it's a bit deeper and more saturated on the Pocket 2. And I've really noticed that at night with footage from the Pocket 2. It really seems to give the sky an over-exaggerated purple glow, which reminds me a lot like how my Samsung Galaxy S20 FE handles those conditions. I do have these gimbals on follow mode. And they're set to slow. So I will just head 
south into the financial district now. Maybe I'll quickly pop into Osgood Hall here. There's still some nice colors on the trees so we can get a comparison of that. And if you're wondering, I do not have the creator combo for the pocket two. So I don't have the magic handle or the wider angle lens attachment or the wireless microphone. I, I really wouldn't use the wireless microphone. I have a rather high quality external lav mic, which I record externally and then sync to the video and software afterwards. And I can't imagine wanting to change from that setup. Although if I do pick up a second pocket too, perhaps I will go for the creator combo. One of the real nice advantages of the Pocket 2 is it does have a control stick on it. For instance, I can slide the gimbal up or down like this, or left and right, and I can alternate it into a zoom, which works at two times in 4K. I am recording this in 4K60, as I always do. So I can kind of approximate the lens of the pocket one by zooming. Okay, this is where York Street begins, so I'll head south down here. I think the horizon level might be drifting slightly on my pocket one, which is giving me an extra challenge in trying to keep the angles relatively the same in each camera. Maybe I'll duck inside the parking garage here at the Sheridan Hotel. I don't know if this is allowed or not.
If it were a brighter day, I'd try walking directly towards the sun to compare that, but that doesn't seem to be in the cards. There's a look west, down Richmond Street West. The last video I uploaded, which was around the Young and Lawrence neighborhood, rather than use my external microphone, I used the internal mics on the Pocket 2. I think the stereo effect is quite neat. The one drawback was, I think, my voice comes across a bit better with the external mic. And that's really my only holdback of permanently switching to the internal stereo mics. And again, the audio really wouldn't be that usable at all if I didn't have the wind covers over each of the four mics. zoom in on these guys. Certainly much easier to frame skyscrapers into the shot with the uh, Pocket 2. And even though it's on slow mode, the gimbal seems to move a bit quicker. Not much. So I'm now walking east on Adelaide Street West. And that giant head is about to appear on the left side. One more look up at First Canadian Place, which is much easier done with the Pocket 2. I think that wider angle certainly makes things more immersive. And these are the conditions where the Pocket 1 sometimes struggles, although it seems to be doing well. A 
occasionally I'll turn around a corner into a dark alley or a darker street and the exposure just <laughs> exposure just won't adjust. That's one of the challenges of using a camera and just leaving it on ISO. You're sort of left to the mercy of the device. Then again, there is really no way to manually control that while you're recording just one long continuous video through such various conditions, such as these walking videos. And there are so many walking channels on YouTube now. And I think the majority of them seem to use the Osmo Pocket One. It is worth noting this is actually the second Pocket One that I've owned. The first one developed a focus pumping issue. And I couldn't in good conscience sell it, so I've just sort of held on to it. Now my plan for the Pocket One is to use it in bad weather conditions. So if there's some heavy rain or a big snowstorm, I'll probably take the Pocket One out as neither of these are waterproof. So if I'm going to sacrifice a camera, I'd rather it be the one, of course. I'll also be far more inclined to just throw it in my coat pocket so even when I'm going out and I'm not recording, I'll have one of these cameras on me just should the uh, need to film something arise. So this is Bay Street. One thing I haven't really thought of is how I'm going to show the two cameras in the video you're watching. I just sort of came down with the idea to throw on a live stream. That guy's really considerate. No attempt made to move at all. What a jerk. So I guess I'll have some fun figuring that part out. Let's look east down Adelaide Street.
and this is Bay and King. So I could go either direction on King. If I turn right, I'll get to St. Andrew Subway. If I go left, I'll get to King Station. And if I go south, I'll get to Union Station. This is a rather iconic look. Okay, let's just head east here. There's Scotia Plaza. Apparently with the Pocket 2, you can live stream if you have the magic handle to the DJI map or app. But if it's anything like streaming with the Osmo Action, I think I'll take a pass on that and continue to stream with my phone. Just the apps you can use are a lot more robust. There should be an entrance to King Station just on the other side here. All right, so let's go down and wait for a subway train. I'll have to fish my uh, transit card out. I'm holding both cameras with one hand right now. There we go.
Unfortunately, these aren't automatic doors. It's kind of interesting, they don't have the uh, newer updated gates there. Let's go northbound. Sounds like there's a train rolling in right now. Hopefully this is the correct direction. It is now just after 6 p.m. I just finished recording a live stream and this is a comparison of the low light performance between the Pocket 1 and the Pocket 2. This is Front Street in downtown Toronto, and that's a look at Union Station. It's not particularly well lit down here, so this should be a good test of the low light abilities of these cameras. I'm just going to walk over to the next intersection. I didn't bother to slip the uh, wind muff over the pocket one, so the audio you're hearing is being recorded on the pocket two. If I have time, I usually run my night videos through a denoising filter, which cleans up some of the noise you'll see, particularly in the sky but I won't do that for these videos, so I'm just uploading them as they came out of the camera. And I've been using, or I will use their native bitrate as well, so they won't be compressed in any way, at least not until YouTube gets to them and starts to do its thing. If you guys like this video, perhaps I'll do a more detailed nighttime comparison between the two cameras. There is a look up Bay Street. All right, I will. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this comparison between the Osmo Pocket One and the Pocket Two. There are links to my Instagram account and Patreon in the description if you wish to support the channel as well as YouTube channel memberships are available on the main page. Alright, thanks for watching guys, and I will catch you on the next one.